Aloha, welcome to lesson four of our natural cloth diapering class here on ECPZ. In this video, I'm going to share tips for building a natural cloth diaper stash. We'll go over choosing which size of cloth diapers to get, which of the many styles to get, and how many cloth diapers you'll need. First up is choosing the size of cloth diapers. As we covered in lesson three, there are three main categories of sizes of cloth diapers. There are newborn cloth diapers, there are sized cloth diapers, and there is what's called one size cloth diapers that can adjust to fit a wide range of sizes and heights of babies. First up, if you're still expecting your baby, you're going to want to decide whether you're planning to cloth diaper during the newborn phase. Newborn cloth diapers tend to fit average size babies for the first zero to six weeks. Or if you're lucky, your baby may be able to fit in newborn diapers for about two to three months. I personally only recommend investing in newborn diapers if you plan to start cloth diapering within the first month. If your baby is born in the six, seven, or eight pound range, they're likely to fit well in newborn cloth diapers. However, if you have a baby who's born at nine or 10 pounds, they may already be a bit big for newborn cloth diapers. One size cloth diapers tend to start fitting around 10 pounds, but you'll wanna keep in mind that newborn babies have a unique shape to them. They tend to have teeny tiny little legs and if you want to stay under them build cord, they have a pretty short rise. So this is a one size diaper all the way snapped down to the smallest size and this is a newborn diaper. The one size diaper comes up a lot higher. This is how the two look together. If you're planning to cloth diaper from birth, there are two considerations you want to keep in mind. First is meconium poop, and second is the umbilical cord stump. Meconium is the dark green tar-like poop that's been building up in the bowels during the fetal time, and it's passed out soon after birth. It may take a couple days to totally get out of baby's system. But please don't let meconium poop scare you away from cloth diapering from birth. With my daughter, we were using workhorse fitted newborn diapers and after she had a meconium poop, my husband simply rinsed them with water and then put them in the diaper pail. They rinsed clean no problem and came out without stains. So if you want to start cloth diapering from birth, don't worry too much about your cloth diapers getting stained. Cotton comes clean pretty easily. The second consideration is that babies tend to have their umbilical cord stump for about the first one to two weeks. So you're going to want to look for diapers that are low rise or have an umbilical cord snap down so they can comfortably sit below the umbilical cord stump. If you're using wool diaper covers, it is okay for a wool diaper cover to go over the cord since it's breathable. However, it may kind of tug or pull on the cord, just as any other baby clothes would do as well. I personally liked to have my daughter just in a cloth diaper without any clothes over until her umbilical cord stump fell off, but it depends on the weather where you live if you can do that or not. If you are going to be cloth diapering during the newborn phase, I recommend getting a variety of different styles. You'll have plenty of opportunity to test them out and see which ones fit your baby best and which are easiest for you to use. Newborn babies pee and poop super frequently and poopy diapers should be changed right away. Sometimes I was changing up to 20 cloth diapers a day during the newborn phase. If your baby is already a few months old or you're planning not to cloth diaper during the newborn phase, you'll want to consider whether you're going to use sized cloth diapers or one size cloth diapers. So as we covered before, the one size can adjust the rise to fit a wide range of sizes of babies, whereas the size to come in small, medium, large, or one, two, three. So this can expand out and instead of buying a new diaper, you can just keep using the one size as your baby grows. One size diapers have become quite popular these days. However, my personal preference is for sized cloth diapers. That's for a few reasons. I like that sized cloth diapers tend to give a better fit. They're trimmer and less bulky. And for me, they actually serve the same purpose as a one size cloth diaper. My babies tend to be born around six or seven pounds and can start out with newborn cloth diapers. Then when they outgrow newborn at around 12 pounds, they can start fitting into a size medium diaper, which tends to fit from about 12 to 20 pounds. 
My babies thin out a lot as toddlers, so they only weigh about 20 pounds at one or two years old. And we transition to potty independence and underwear when they're still about the 20 pound mark. So for us, we can simply use newborn diapers, size medium diapers, and then underwear. However, if you have a baby that's chunking up really fast or your toddler stays chubby, then it might be an advantage to you to have a one size cloth diaper that can keep fitting for longer if you don't want to have to get size medium, large, extra large in the sized diapers. It's really a personal preference. You may decide that you want to build your stash on just one single style cloth diapers, or you may want to have a few different styles depending on various situations. You can think about what you would use at home during the day, at night, out and about, and when other caregivers are taking care of your baby, and you might want something that's really easy for them to use. We're going to look at the ease of putting on baby spectrum, the ease of washing and drying spectrum, the cost spectrum, and a couple other factors. Let's look at the spectrum of natural cloth diapers in terms of ease of putting the diaper onto your baby. These first three are about the same when it comes to putting them onto your baby, an all-in-one, a pocket diaper, and an all-in-two. We looked at these more in depth in lesson three on the styles of different cloth diapers. With an all-in-one cloth diaper, the absorbency is sewn to the outer waterproof layer, so it's one easy step to put it on your baby. With a pocket diaper, the absorbency is stuffed into the pocket, so once that's been done, it's one easy step to put it on your baby. With an all-in-two, the absorbency is snapped into the waterproof cover, so once that's been done, it's one easy step to put it on your baby. In lesson three, I also showed putting each of these styles of cloth diapers onto a baby doll, so you can refer back to lesson three if you're a little uncertain how you would put these on. So these next three options are two-step ones when using with a cover. With a fitted diaper, you'd first put on the fitted diaper and then put on the cover. With a pre-fold, if you choose to fasten it around your baby, then that's gonna be a little bit more difficult than putting on a fitted diaper. With a flat, if you choose to fold it and fasten it onto your baby, again, that will be more difficult than putting on a fitted. However, you could also use a pre-fold or a flat, just pad folded in the cover, and when you do that, they'll be easier than the fitted diaper. If you have tri-folded the pre-fold and laid it inside of the cover, when it comes to putting it on your baby, it'll be one simple step to put that onto baby. So that will be one step, whereas the fitted and cover is two steps. If you've pad folded the flat and laid it inside the cover, again, that's one step to put that onto baby. With these three options, you're also able to sometimes use them without the cover when you wanna watch your baby closely, see when they pee right away, or just give them more time to air out. So with the fitted, it'll just be one step to put on the fitted. If you're going to use a pre-fold with diaper belt, it's super easy to remove and replace this pre-fold. So this is a great setup for elimination communication, babies who use the potty. This will be even easier than getting a fitted diaper on and off. And you can also pad fold with the flat and use that with the diaper belt. That's just gonna take a little bit longer to do the folding than the pre-fold would. But a diaper belt is a super easy option for getting on and off your baby. Let's look at the spectrum of natural cloth diapers in terms of ease of washing and drying. This is gonna be really important if you don't have a washer or dryer at home and you're gonna be hand washing or hang drying your diapers, or perhaps if you're going to be traveling a lot and you just want the simplest thing to wash and dry. So a flat diaper, since it's one thin piece of fabric, it will be the easiest to wash and quickest to dry. Covers are also pretty easy to wash and dry. Next up will be the pre-fold, it's a bit thicker than the flat in terms of layers, so it'll take a little bit more dry time, but it's still an easy option to wash. Next up would be a snap-in insert for an all-in-two. This is a little less bulky, so a little bit quicker drying, possibly than a fitted diaper, but it's gonna depend exactly what these are made out of. So up next, since the fitted diaper is separate from the cover, that does make it easier to wash. It's just the cotton on both sides, water can get through both sides in the washing process. For a pocket diaper, it's really going to depend what you have stuffed your pocket with. These Thirsty's natural pocket diapers come with cotton and cotton hemp inserts, and because of that, those would be pretty easy to wash and dry. 
However, if you're using pocket diapers with polyester microfiber inserts, those hold on to stink and those could be really difficult to wash and get them really clean. So for the pocket, it's gonna depend what you have in there because again, you could be stuffing your pocket with an insert, with a pre-fold, with a flat. So if you wanted pockets to be easy to wash option, then you could use them with flats inside. And once the absorbency has been removed, the cover is pretty easy to wash. The most difficult one to wash and dry is going to be an all-in-one diaper. That's because of the way the absorbency is sewn to the waterproof outer layer. These are made with a pocket through here, so that's gonna allow water to pass through from this side and this side to help to get this clean. Since it's a lot of layers bunched up together, that can take a bit more time to dry than a flat would, but this is still similar to a pre-fold, so the dry time won't be so much more than a pre-fold but it just is a bit harder to wash and dry when you have everything attached all together. I wanna to note here that with four of these options, you can keep reusing the cover multiple times. So if you're doing a flat with a cover, pre-fold with a cover, a snap and insert on an all in two diaper or a fitted diaper and cover, if just the absorbent layer, such as the flat diaper, gets pee or poop on it, that will go into your diaper pail but if the cover is still clean, it hasn't been soiled, there's no poop on it, you could just air dry this and use it again for the next diaper change. So with these first four options here, you'll want to have more of the absorbency, but you can have fewer of the outer covers. Perhaps for every four pre-folds, you might just have one cover. That's in contrast to the pocket diapers and the all-in-one diapers, where the entire diaper will need to be washed with each diaper change. For the pocket diaper, when the baby pees, this pocket material here will get peed on, it will get wet, so both the pocket and the insert will need to be changed with every single diaper change. So that means you are going to need to have as many pocket diapers as you want to have changes for your baby. With an all-in-one, every single time a diaper is peed or pooped on, the entire diaper is going to need to be washed. So you would need to have as many all-in-ones as you want to have diaper changes. When we're talking about ease of washing and drying with an absorbent layer plus a cover, it's going to matter what your cover is made out of for how it's washed. Normally polyester covers with the TPU laminate or PUL laminate inside are just washed in the washing machine. Whereas some of these wool diaper covers would be hand wash only. There are certain interlock wool diaper covers that can be washed in the machine, but this one is a hand wash only. This delicate wool crepe would also be hand washed. And a knit wool cover such as this would definitely be hand washed. This would not be machine washed. If you're considering using wool covers and you want to know the details of how you would wash and dry these, then please subscribe and stay tuned for our lesson on wool care. That's coming up. We'll show multiple ways to wash and lanolize wool diaper covers. One thing to note is that these polyester covers will need to be washed much more frequently. Maybe you can reuse this for about three diaper changes and then put it in the diaper pail. So you're going to need to have more polyester covers than if you were using wool covers. The wool covers don't get stinky the way polyester does. Once they're lanolized, the lanolin neutralizes the pee that gets on them. So if these only have been peed on, you can either keep reusing it or if it's damp, air it out and reuse it again. So you'll be able to get much more uses out of a wool cover unless it gets some poop on it and then it should be washed right away but you could use a wool cover for more changes over and over again than a polyester cover. Let's look at the cost spectrum when talking about natural cloth diapers. The least expensive will be flat cloth diapers. You could also repurpose items you already have, such as baby receiving blankets, and use those as a flat diaper. You can check out my video on cheap, easy cloth diapering, where I shared multiple do-it-yourself options. Now, when you're talking about covers, Polyester covers are going to be less expensive than wool covers, but I'll give you some reasons later why it still might be worth investing in wool covers. 
Next up, prefolds would cost just a little bit more than the flats. In general, the next most expensive one would be inserts for an all-in-two, but that's going to depend on the specific brand that you're looking at. Next up is a fitted diaper. These are the least expensive when it comes to fitted diapers. The workhorse clothies fitted diapers from Green Mountain Diapers. The cost spectrum goes up quite a bit from there. Now a pocket diaper, it's going to depend your setup of how expensive it is. There are some very cheap pocket diapers that have polyester as the pocket and polyester as the inserts. If you're using this Thirsty's Natural Pocket Diaper, then it's gonna be more expensive. And you need to keep in mind that for every single diaper change, you'll need this pocket portion plus the inner absorbency portion. You're not going to be able to reuse the outside of this style of diaper for multiple diaper changes. Then all-in-ones can also be on the expensive end of the spectrum. Sometimes they're about the same amount as fitted diapers though, but they do have the waterproof cover built in already, whereas the fitted diaper, you would also need to buy the waterproof cover separately. With the all-in-one, you're going to need the entire diaper for each diaper change. There'll be no reusing of the waterproof layer with an all-in-one. Wool diaper covers are more expensive than polyester covers. Some reasons you might choose to use wool is that you want an all natural option, both the cover and the absorbency being natural. They're breathable, they're temperature regulating, so they work good in hot or cold weather. They're very comfortable for your baby to wear, and you can reuse a wool cover many more times than a polyester cover, and the wool still won't smell. Because of that, you can get away with owning fewer wool covers than if you were using all polyester covers. If you're looking for something that's the most versatile that you can use in multiple different ways, that would be flats and next up prefolds. In our lesson about the different diaper styles, I showed some of the different ways you can use those with your baby. But also once you're done using them as diapers, you can still use a flat as a kitchen drying towel, a cleaning towel, a burp cloth. It might be used as a blanket. There's just so many ways to use a flat since it's basically just a big square or rectangle piece of fabric. Also a prefold can still be used for cleaning up spills, puddles on the floor. I use the really small preemie prefolds in our Pottet Plus travel potty to absorb the pee if I'm not somewhere where I can easily dump the potty. So flats or prefolds are something you can keep on using even after the diapering days are done. These other styles pretty much just are a diaper fitted all in two, pocket or all in one, they're not gonna magically change into something other than a diaper when your baby's done with diapers. If you're looking for something with really good longevity, maybe you're planning to use it on multiple children or you just want it to, to last for a really long time, a flat or a prefold is gonna have the best longevity and that's because they don't have any elastic or snaps or closures. So on a fitted diaper or these other styles, the elastic could go bad eventually, need to be replaced, a snap might pop off. If you have a hook and loop diaper, the hook and loop might stop being sticky. So the ones that are gonna have the best longevity are the flats and prefolds. Also what might happen on a polyester waterproof cover where there it's a cover, pocket, or all in one, is it might start you losing its TPU lining it might start to delaminate and lose its waterproofness, whereas a wool cover is not really going to lose the waterproof properties. It just needs to be lanolized again to be waterproof again. How many cloth diapers do you need? The big question. If you're going to be cloth diapering during the newborn phase, I recommend having at least 36 of the absorbent cotton portion, although I personally prefer to have 42 since I change my baby quite frequently. As far as covers, I would go with a minimum of four wool covers or a minimum of six polyester covers. In deciding how much absorbency and how many covers, you can think of the ratio of how many times would you be reusing one cover per inner cotton piece. If you have 36 prefolds, for example, and only six covers, then each cover on average would be reused six times. If that just doesn't seem realistic with explosive newborn baby poop, you might want to get nine covers 
in which case each cover would be reused on average with about four prefolds each. So that might be a better ratio for you. If you will be cloth diapering after the newborn phase, I recommend having at least 24 of the cotton absorbency, although I personally prefer to have at least 36 so I can frequently change the diaper without having to worry about it. Karen of Green Mountain Diapers makes a good point that you need to have enough cloth diapers that you can make a full load of laundry, which is around 24 cloth diapers. Because part of cleaning cloth diapers is agitation, when the diapers rub up against each other in the washing machine, that helps to release the soil and get them cleaner. So you want to have a full load of cloth diapers. It's also nice to have enough diapers that you can go about every other day between washes. If you'll be hand washing, for instance in a bucket and plunger, then maybe you only need one day's worth of cloth diapers. After the newborn phase, I recommend having at least four diaper covers, but again you can figure out the ratio of how many changes of the cotton portion per covers you're comfortable with. An example newborn cloth diaper stash could be 24 newborn size prefolds, 6 newborn half flats, and these are great for repurposing as burp cloths or towels. So even if you don't end up wrapping them around your baby and fastening them or pad folding them, you can still use these flats for a lot of other purposes. 6 newborn fitted diapers, so you can give that style a try and six newborn all-in-ones that could be really convenient for nighttime when it's nice to have a one-piece, easy-to-put-on system. If a particular one of those styles doesn't appeal to you, then instead of that style, you could just go ahead and get more prefolds. They're my top recommendation for newborns because they're so versatile, you can use them in many ways. Along with those, you may want to get two of the Clothies wrap covers in size zero. These are the ones with the two umbilical cord snap-downs so they're going to be great in the early days when the baby still has an umbilical cord stem. And then two of the size one clothies wraps. These start fitting around seven pounds, so they're also great for newborns. And I highly recommend two of the Baby Greens Classic side snapping wool covers. I love these covers. You could either opt for newborn if you think you'll have a really small baby, like my daughter who was born at five pounds, 13 ounces, or you could go ahead and start with size small, which is intended for zero to six months old. I also like to have two wool diaper belts so that I can allow my baby some coverless time with a flat or prefold diaper. Please let me know in the comments if you have any more questions about building your cloth diaper stash. That wraps up lesson four. Next up in lesson five, we'll be covering some cloth diapering accessories that you may want to have along with your cloth diapers. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Let's make cloth mainstream.